On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, we're getting further along on the vertical stabilizer. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. Today we are getting further along on the, on the vertical stabilizer. Actually, this was done a, lot, a few days, a few weeks ago. But, uh, well, you know, a little behind on the video, video editing process. If my mouth can engage properly, I can actually get this out. But anyway, <laughs> so in the last video, go ahead and watch it. And uh, it, yeah, we went ahead and put together, or at least got everything ready for priming for the vertical stabilizer spar. And so this time, we're going to be working on both the skeleton and prepping the skin for priming. And yeah, so that's where we're going to be. And I think we'll even be able to get to the portion of the stabilizer spar build or stabilizer build where we're actually riveting on the skin to the skeleton. I, I don't know. I, I have to figure that out. But uh, the, all of the video for that was shot over the course of a few weeks. And so we'll see. But thanks for watching. Here we go. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed everything except for the, uh, the spar caps are still in there, uh, in, in the spar. Uh, I have deburred this and with the last little bit of countersinking this is ready to be scuffed up pre-coated yeah, pre and primed yeah we're, we're ready for prime we are ready for prime time baby yeah baby yeah how many other dad jokes can I fit in here about priming many unbearable hours later all right we are back and back from another day of work, actually. Uh, <coughs> Very exciting time. Um, and we've actually started, uh, we've taken off all of the, the blue vinyl off of this, the uh, vertical stabilizer skin. Uh, some people go ahead and take a soldering iron and take the vinyl off the just where the holes are and leave the rest of it on um, that's fine you can do that I just see that as an extra step uh, the only time I can see that actually being worth it is if you are going to be leaving the plane polished you know like as in you know not you're not going to be painting the exterior of the plane at all uh, for me I'm painting it uh, they're going to scuff up the exterior anyway before they prime and paint and so I just went ahead and removed all of the blue vinyl and yes I have I am friends with Jason Ellis and I always get a chuckle whenever I've watched his videos and he called it bluey I suspect that he knows that it's blue vinyl and that he called it bluing just to be just just to call it bluing to kind of um, get a reaction because well that's the kind of guy he is he'll he'll say things that he already knows the answer to which is not bad uh, just so that he can kind of generate uh comments on his videos um, he has moved on from building. Um, he is, uh, his mission changed. And he's actually in the process of uh, moving. And like he said in his last video that his, the closest airport to him is like an hour away. So, I kind of understand why you said it, but great guy, can't say enough good things about him. Um, but anyway, 
let's get to dumpling this because the next step after this, I, although I probably should glove up and just do the pre-coat, but the pre-coat only lasts for 24 hours before you have to do it again. Um, pre-coat is, is the step that you do before you actually prime. So the, all it would do is just basically remove the, it, it would clean up the, it, 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 this looks clean, but it's really not. Like I could take, I could take a, a, a clean rag with a little bit of pre-coat, which, where's my pre-coat? There it is. Just to kind of give you an idea. I do it. Do a little pre-coat there. Clean section of the rag. needs to sit for a while or but I do know that when I uh, pre-coat and I use uh, a scotch bright pad and wipe it off with the rag then it comes out black maybe I don't know but anyway so back to work The DRDT2 dimple die machine um, contraption, I don't know what you call it, but <laughs> it is an awesome thing, but you will have to wrestle with your vertical stabilizer skin. Uh, it was on like Donkey Kong for me, I just could not get that hole, that last hole uh, without having to work at it i mean i had to come at it like snook a gin uh i don't know if you guys watch wrestling at all but i had to come at it from the top rope and just kind of uh, go come on it is on like donkey kong at this point i am getting this uh there was a point when it kind of got me though uh i had got a little bit too much pressure on the top and I do not have this bolted down to my table. And it just went over like R2-D2 losing a leg. And so, yeah, it, it got, a, got a bit of a, uh, a dent in it that was caused by the, the dimple die machine. Um, and I had to kind of, fo you know, pound that out a little bit. I even tried getting the close-in dimple die as you see me getting out here and the results were just rather lackluster for me at least I'm sure with a little bit of training I'll be able to get better results I don't know if you do if you have an idea of any one that has successfully used this you know, the close-in dimple die uh, and gotten halfway decent results, especially if they've posted a video. Comment down below with the video link. I'd love to look at it. Uh, that goes for anything else that you see me doing wrong, or think you, can, or if you think I can do it better. I am open to constructive criticism. But in the end, I just wrestled with it, and we got it. So I'm not sure if I went ahead and explained this in the video later, in this video later, but this is actually skin number two. I joined the Double Dimple Club and yeah, in the last video I did say that I cut my skin in half because, well, there's not a whole lot of space. Uh, and so I just went ahead and ordered another skin, but guess what? 
I joined the Double Dimple Club again on this one. Ah! All right, well, that's the major stuff. Uh, I still have around the edges to do, but that's simple enough. I can get that with the pneumatic squeezer and take the dies. That is the DRDT2 dimple die machine um, from Experimental Arrow. Uh, interesting story about how that came into being. Apparently he was building an airplane in his apartment. Yes, it does happen. And he had a C-frame dimpler, which you have to pound with a hammer. And the neighbors kept complaining about noise from pounding. So he needed a quieter way of dimpling his skins and his parts. So that was his creation. At the time that I bought it, it was 400 bucks. I think it's probably about 450 to 500 bucks right about now. I haven't looked in a while. And shipping, <laughs> yeah. Shipping has gone up astronomically since I purchased mine. So that is that. And you probably did see me trying to use these with the rivet, the rivet gun. Uh, these are close quarters dimple dies and basically it's a pole rivet mandrel with a dimple die this is for the for three eighths inch holes number 40 um, this is my first time trying it it does say in the instructions that it doesn't do as good of a job as the die as these dies um, and yeah, I would have to agree. As a matter of fact, I, it looked like it hardly did anything. So, but thankfully I was able to manhandle it in there and with the DRDT2 and get it to dimple the way I wanted it to. So, ah, oh, grateful. All right, so I'm reading ahead in the plans and it's a good thing that I did because um, it says, in, so normally if there's a dimple, you dimple, but you can also machine countersink, but there's too much here to dimple along where the spar caps are. So they say machine countersink from the spar caps on down where the skin would stop. So what I am going to do, I am going to mark And then I'm going to fit this to the back of the skin so I can see where this stops. Where the skin stops. Um, step eight says to do not countersink the holes in the spar which were marked in step five, which were step five, and, oh, the empennage screw holes. Okay, mark the corresponding holes in the vertical stab skin. In the flanges, okay, yeah. Well, I know that those are the top, these top eight holes up here. Um, but I, I, will, I will go ahead and double check that. Uh, Let's see, judging by the looking back here on page 6-6 -6 for the rivet callouts. Okay. Empennage fairing screw holes. Ah, okay. Good thing that I looked. Good thing I looked, and a good thing I also did not dimple the edges yet. So I will not, I will have to mark those, mark those holes.
All right, it's, it's the weekend, finally, for me, as of the recording of this portion of the video. And over this, oh, the next thing that I'm going to be doing over the course of this weekend for myself, uh, I'm going to be pre-coating and priming the parts that are that are ready, which are basically the main spar, the inside of the skins. Again, I'm leaving the outside of the skins bare because my painter, Evoke Aviation, they're going to be the ones to prime the outside of the airplane. So they're going to be the ones that are going to be priming the outside of the airplane. Um, but I'm looking ahead in the plans and there's a couple of things that I can do, which, for example, uh, the, the Inspar rib, I have gone ahead and dimpled the bottom four holes as indicated that this doubler will go, will sit in between, yeah, behind but now, to accept those dimples, the plans call for countersinking these bottom four holes. So that's what's next. So this is going to be interesting. I've not countersunk anything that has already been primed. I probably will touch up the touch up with primer afterwards makes sense because I'm going to be priming parts anyway to include this with the next batch um, speaking of the next batch did some quality control work and I noticed that there are some spots in here can't you can't really tell on camera but there are some spots that if I hold it up to where the light shines on it that it's shiny when it shouldn't be because it's already been primed. So, um, and there's another spot over here that I didn't prime very well. So, good thing I caught this now. And the other stuff, other parts, other places, all look good, especially down here, which is a good thing. So, back to it. One of the things that I did was I took a suggestion from a couple other builders, actually one in particular, Christine from Plain Lady, and I purchased multiple Microstop countersink cages. The reason for that is that it can be rather tedious to go ahead and remove the countersink bit and then have to recalibrate the cage to for the new one instead um well she had i think she had got had purchased something along the lines of like four or five different cages uh i just went a little bit further than that and got cages for all of my countersink bits and yeah that way i don't have to do so much adjusting so you see here, I'm still adjusting things. I am getting things dialed in as far as the rivets on the the lower spar uh, doubler, and we're getting this thing done finally. We're, I'm so happy that I am at this point finally riveting something together, as opposed to restarting this this project over and over and over. One other thing that I kind of discovered on my own is that if you do not have the pneumatic squeezer held just right, as in like at a 90 degree angle, it will want to cock open, uh, cock to one side on you when the uh, when the uh, when the squeezer 
kind of gets down towards the rivet. This is where I am deburring the inboard spar for the vertical stabilizer, and I'm I, I, this is pre-coat right here. This is uh, this is necessary. Either you either use pre-coat or you alodyne. Alodyne is a bit more caustic, and but it works really well. It's what the Air Force uses. Pre-coat works just as well. It's better than nothing, I'm told, from a previous Air Force maintainer, from a retired Air Force maintainer. And you want to go ahead and let it, you know, go, let it just spray it on, scuff it up really good, and either wipe it off or spray it off. I believe the, I believe the preferred method is spraying off with water, wash it off with water. That's why you see me getting up here. Uh, for a little bit of a time and going out and washing it off with the hose and then coming back in drying it off inspecting and scuffing up any areas that did not meet my specifications and of course after this comes the primer uh, I don't really go ahead and show me priming all that much because well uh, that for that, there's right behind me. You see this the cage. Uh, well, not really cage, but you know the stand that I use for small parts priming that I made from PVC. And basically, in that whole area right behind me, yeah, I have this spray booth that co collapses up into the ceiling that I built. And so this is all the preparation for priming and we will go ahead and show the final final uh, completion of the vertical stabilizer in the next video so please be f beware well not really beware but watch out for that the best way to watch out for that is to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell set to all so you do not miss any videos that i post uh, it is really, really appreciated for all for everyone who has subscribed, and it gets us that much closer to the goal of 1,000 subscribers. Uh, but here, it, with all of the dimple of the the holes dimpled that need to be dimpled, um, at least a good portion of them, because I did dimple in the in the original skin that you see up against the wall over my left shoulder. Actually, it's my right shoulder, but you know, it, from this perspective, it looks like my left shoulder. And you see me just scrubbing away in preparation for priming. I will give you a little bit of a heads up of, about what the next video will be after this one. And well, I just got back from Oshkosh 2023. And so that's where we're going to go ahead and get the next video from. As soon as I get it in the can, or it's actually in the can already, but as soon as I get it edited, thank you so much for watching folks. I'm going to end this, end this video here. Uh, this is where we go ahead and say, I do for now, until next time, and here's a couple other videos that you may enjoy watching. Until next time, remember this time and always check your six.